Oh, it's okay. Look, I almost burnt my house down, and I got all these burns oh. a couple about three How months ago. Oh, silliness. Who's in for a hint? Oh, well, maybe, out. yeah, we'll work it out. Okay, Joe Diamede here with a familiar face. TTRP TV coming at you with another interview from the Grand Jet. And I'm sitting here with uh, Martha Tilston once again on more stable land so she won't fall into a hole like you did last year. And, uh, and now I know her better. I know she has CDs. <laughs> I know she, she played venues last year. So since last year to this year, how's your year been in the UK? Oh, um, yeah, it's been good. We haven't, haven't done too many gigs. I'm just about the right amount. Um, lot of sea swimming and a bit of writing. Oh, we released an album. A lot of it we wrote here, actually, in the mountains. So that's come out on band camp. It's called Luminous. And it's just kind of, yeah, songs uh, quite inspired by the mountains. Yes, you, we were lucky enough to hear a few a few of those songs last night, and they were beautiful. I must thank you again for last night. It was uh, just, again, seeing you in concert is like a meditative retreat. You know, you, the whole audience, you feel the, you just suck the heart out of everybody and share it Ooh. around. Well, no, 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 in a good way, and <laughs> not like in a vampire type way. Um, I, it just, I think you just have a way of moving the heart around. <laughs> you say, is that the right way to say that? Uh oh, we're going down this path again. So, <laughs> Martha, what do you think? You know, you said something to that effect last night. Maybe not those not those exact words. Um. Yeah, no, it felt like definitely lots of open hearts last night. I, I because I'm in holiday mode as well, not really working. I'm just kind of here on holiday. Um. Yeah, I hadn't really. We've been we've been like composing music and writing, and we've been like drawing these story cards. I've just been in a different creative holiday kind of zone so playing last night i definitely had moments of like feeling like my fingers were chipolatas <laughs> like playing. but um the nice thing about uh not feeling really practiced actually was that um yeah my heart just felt very open but so was the audience so it was just i think it's um actually i drew before the gig i drew a little circle and i and, and I did say that I wanted it to feel like we're in a circle, like all, all, all um, passing that energy, like a fruitful energy around rather than me kind of giving it or sucking. <laughs> sucking. <laughs> and, it, and I must say, it felt like that because, I mean, your, your concert last year was beautiful, but there was a lot of people who came to this concert who were there last year. Oh. And um, they, they came again. And then there was a lot of people who missed it last year and they came. And I think everyone had... There was no expectation, um, but there was a lot of people who I told about it, who we talked about last night, who had been to um, the retreat center, the Plum Village, and I, I said, it's right up your alley. And then when I told you about that last night, you were saying something similar about, remember we said something about Plum Village? And it struck a chord with you. Have you been to Plum Village? No, really, really drawn to it. There's been a few sort of bizarre coincidences. Yeah, I just definitely feel... Um, at some point, if things will align, it'd be lovely to go there. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, Tichnut Han is just, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. And um, yeah, it's interesting that, um, that sort of uh, coincidence last night. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but it was a lot of fun as well. I really enjoyed all the translating as well. Yeah, that's always a bit of fun. Yeah, because it's fun when it's when it's just done by the friends live, and then you were speaking in French, and asking for translations, but you were speaking in French. It, it worked well. It worked well. It was not not exactly a comedy act, but <laughs> nearly a comedy act. <laughs> but it was it was it was a nice, yeah. It was it was a nice part of the concert because it's it, it just engages you more with the with the people and just the thing about you on stage is the vulnerability and the humanness. It just shines through. Well, yeah, I suppose, um, yeah, I don't really know what to say about that. That's the only way I know to it. Yeah, um, yeah just, um, just, yeah, just open up. And uh, when I, I sometimes sort of teach on songwriting uh, camps and songwriting retreats, and definitely that's something that I, I always um, really invite people to, to, yeah, be vulnerable and, like, go right into the truth and, and the authenticity of what you're feeling and, and actually I spoke to someone last night as a songwriter and I was saying about it because um, 
you know, sometimes we can write a song and be quite oblique about what the meaning is because it, there's somewhere, some part of us feels really vulnerable if we actually really name, okay, this is about heartbreak or this is about when I acted really badly. You know, that's another thing, shame, you know. Or this is when I handled, didn't handle something very well. So I'll just kind of skirt around it and, you know, um, which is understandable, but um, there's something in just really bringing it out and taking the sting out of it and looking at it. And also, I think as an, I love as an audience watching someone who pins a feeling, yeah, you know, and doesn't skirt around it too much. Really pins it, <laughs> you know, even if it's like they're being vulnerable or whatever, because then it gives me permission to be vulnerable. Right. And there's some kind of like we're all we're all then having a good old cry together. Yeah. And, and funny that you say that because it was going through my head when you were <laughs> speaking that I looked around and there were friends of mine, there were people who were crying, especially that one song we spoke about about your friend who left uh, the, the industry. It sounded like that, that, you know, the music industry. And there was a few songs that brought out emotion. And that's the, the loveliness about being in the concert. And I'm not a songwriter, but I, I, I'm very into lyrics when I listen to music. Mm. And I... I um, love that you are. So many people are, don't know oh. the lyrics. So oh, I'm, thank you, because uh, we work at them. So it's nice to know that you're out there. <laughs> totally. Maybe it's because I'm not a musician. I have musician friends who... who listen to the music and I and I they just don't listen to the lyrics I listen to both and last night I, I like about your songwriting it for me correct me if I'm wrong but it doesn't feel like it has the typical I have to rhyme I have to fit this in it just feels like you're telling you're saying what you want to say and you fit it, the song fits around the lyrics I'm not putting it correctly but when you no, write I know what you mean yeah it just feels um <clears throat> I mean, there's no rules to songwriting, really. This is, um, but do come on a songwriting camp. <laughs> Let me teach you the rules. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but there aren't any. You know, it's so song songwriting camp over. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Sorry, just lost a job for Martha. <laughs> but um, there are some things that that t taken me, uh, you know, a few years <laughs> to kind of work out, and then I definitely enjoy saving people some time with that um but also it's such a journey but so the thing i feel about a song is it kind of reminds me of when i was an out of work actor and i was living back at home and my mum's an artist and she was just annoyed with us just lounging about waiting for the phone to ring <laughs> you know watching midday t tv and things and and she got two breeze blocks out she was like right okay guys this breeze box there's a hammer and a chisel free the free the beast within i'm back back later that's what you're doing today and we're like mm -hmm, okay <laughs> started chipping away at it and it was just like oh my gosh and I, she, I think she, there was another bit of instruction of just don't don't make what you think you want to make out of the breeze blocks just free it go with it yeah. and it was incredible and that that feeling of yeah it was amazing as we chipped away like you don't even know what it is but you start to see there's it's almost like that bit of breeze block wanted to be this shape wanted to be this thing and and so I think songs do sometimes so it's try not to impose what we want on them. And it's just free. Sometimes you're just freeing the song. And sometimes it doesn't want to rhyme too much. Sometimes it's not very clever. <laughs> sometimes it just wants to say, I love you lots. Or, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. Yeah, and that, for me, last night was the feel, the, the overwhelming feeling, I think, is that I really felt that you, your songs were expressing what you wanted to say and you didn't care if, if this word rhymed this one or if it fit into a phrase because you fit it into the song. And, and I was just loving that. I was just loving that because, you know, I'm so I guess we're trained, you know, to have this kind of rhymey kind of thing going on. And, and with you, it didn't. But but it took you away in a whole different book. Because it's like, wow, this, this, you know, Martha's telling us stories, real stories there and, and putting it to her music. And it was... It was just fantastic. It's interesting. This feels like a really sort of in-depth songwriting interview. <laughs> but like, okay, so that is interesting. I did used to rhyme loads. That was like a definite thing. And then I used to get really into rhyming schemes. Like I love Leonard Cohen's. He does a lot of A, 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 B. C, 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 B, if that makes sense. So like he'll do, um, you know, the end of each line will rhyme with the same word a lot, a lot. And and, okay. and a lot of people will only do like two rhymes and then rhyme again and mm -hmm. um, A, B, A, B, C. A, B, right, A, B, right, right. D, right? But he would just go A, 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 B. And, and it's just great because it's relentless. And another thing, another thing, you know. And and I started to write, try out these different patterns. And I do love a rhyme. And the good thing about a rhyme is it limits you. Like if you think, right, I've got to find something that rhymes with chair. What is it? And like, well, here it's the warm mountain air or whatever. So like it can make you come up with, 
um, stuff. But yeah, maybe I've just done a lot of rhyming. I didn't even notice that I'm probably not rhyming so much anymore. Yeah, maybe it's like I'm doing jazz lyrics. Yeah, yeah, so they're the <laughs> free flow, oh. free flow, uh-oh, yeah. No, but I mean, again, and then I, I like rhymes as well, again, because maybe I'm just trained to it, but there's just something special about lyrics that mean something in a song, you know, to me. I'm a Dylan fan. I'm, you know, I grew up in that era where I could just listen to so that's where the voice doesn't matter with Dylan <laughs> you know it's like I just like I, I like his voice but it's not like like angelic like yours <laughs> I don't know if mine's angelic uh, oh, I, I was yeah you have a beautiful voice I mean yeah the last night was I mean that's the one gift I really you know, along with your lyrics and your voice it's like I, I just sit there and go wow how beautiful how lucky it is to be able to give that to people Oh, thank you. Yeah, I feel like it's a real blessing. Thank you for reminding me that is a real blessing to do, to do what I do. And especially because I sing, sing songs about when I used to work in the office. And oh my God, I just remembered I had a dream that I was in the office again. <laughs> we were talking about that. I just dreamt I was in the office, I was working back in the office. Oh God, that's such a relief. Not to, yeah, okay. So yeah, it's a real blessing not to, well, just to be able to, um, yeah, weave a life, meet interesting people travel and feed my kids on songs yeah yeah that's great and feed feed your audience on on that love that's in those songs how great is that i i feel like i do feel like it's all of us like last night particularly it felt like um i don't feel like i'm feeding i feel like we're all tapping in mm. to a, a place that we all want to that we all feel at home at if that makes sense yeah, yeah totally well, i mean like i tried to say in the beginning interview you, just, you you took that heart and you shared it around you know, and, and we all shared it last night. It was it was great. And you were trying to sing an Irish folk song, and you forgot it. Did you happen to remember? Can you give us one stanza so I could show the people <laughs> with the vote? I've never forgotten that before. I, you sing that song for like six years ago. Um, so it's just really interesting. I was also meant to not sing it last night. So. Do you remember it now? I do. This is. I want to hold the mic, or can I? Uh, you want me to hold the mic? I'll hold the mic. Should I hold the mic? You can hold the I mic. just. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a bit Beyonce, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> Beyonce with an Irish folk song. Go ahead. Okay, now we <clears throat> I don't sing love songs you wake my mother She's sleeping here right by my side And in her right hand a silver dagger She says that I can't be your bride All men are fools, says my mother They'll tell you wicked loving lies and in the next breath they'll court another And they'll leave you where the sun does rise My daddy is a handsome devil, oh he is And he wears a chain over five miles long And on every link a heart does dangle of another maid is loved and wronged. So then go home to your own garden. Ah, then go home, return no more. No other man may come a courting. No other man may cross my door. Ah, don't sing love songs, you'll wake my mother And she's sleeping here right by my side And in her right hand a silver dagger Ah, she says that I can't be your bride Beautiful. Thank you, Martha. Thank you very much. It's an American song, but they think it came over from Ireland. But I just, there we go. So I feel like because you're American. And right. Okay. And I have no Irish blood, though. Yeah.
And your 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 stepmother yeah. taught you that. Yeah, Maggie Boyle. Yeah. Maggie Boyle, that's right, the Irish folk singer. Wow. What a great way to end the beautiful interview. And that is the voice we graced with all night, along with her guitar and piano prowess. Uh, Joe Diomedi, TTRP TV, once again coming out from the Grand Jet. And hopefully we'll do a third interview next year when Martha's back. Thank you, Andy, once again, my faithful cameraman, for all my, for all my Martha interviews. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay.